Right, gonna have to be quick because it's extremely lively, like they all have been, right on cue, there it is. Let's see if that one don't go off, let's try again. Take five. Fish number six. With catches like this, I'm going to be signed up to the England cricket team soon. But and just like the first, is again on the uh, floru. Right then, well, welcome to another video. I'm back out in the bank. Today I'm going to be doing a talking point video looking at the debate of bright fluoro hook baits versus mats of hatch. So, which one do you reckon is going to catch me more fish, a bright fluoro hook bait or a match the hatch? Comment down below, smash that subscribe button, like the video, and let's get into it. Let's get some rods out and catch some carp. Come on! Right then, well, first rod to go out. <laughs> this one's the uh, little PB fluoro wafter. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to flick this down the margin. There's a little cut through down to my left, which goes to a uh, a nice bay around the back. So it's an obviously patrol route for the fish. So I'm just going to flip this down there. See if we can get off the mark. Lovely. Just sink the line. It says. There's a few more people turning up now, as you might be able to hear in the background, but uh, fingers crossed. We can get off the mark nice and quickly. Right, rod number two. So you're getting two shots at the back of me, but uh, not much I can do about that. So yeah, second rod's gonna go out towards the island, just off the edge of it. Like I say, there's a couple of people turning up, so I'm going to fish my side of it just to make sure no one turns up and wants to fish the same little area. But, um, like the margin, it's another obvious uh, sort of patrol feature. Lovely. Now, I appreciate with rod number one, I went a bit quiet when I was talking about what I was doing, but, um, so yeah. First thing you want to do is try and sink your line. Easiest way to do that is have a little tension in with one hand, drop the rod tip under the water so the line can start taking the water on. Like I say, it will start sinking, taking out the contours of the bottom. And some fisheries, that's going to be far more important than others, depending on how sort of pressured the fish are, how spooky they are, and things like that. So it's good practice to do it on every single water. And then that way, you'll never forget to do it. Now just setting the rod, so just getting the line slightly tighter down to the rig. Just setting the bobbin, and then just making sure, so these are front drag these, just making sure the drag's enough that it's not gonna take the rod in, but also not and they go screaming off and be halfway around the lake by the time I get to the rod, so. And there we go. Two rods out. Fingers crossed, be off the mark. Come on. Right, I'm uh, just gonna put a bit of bait in over both rods, so. The easiest way for this left hand rod is just to walk around to this little break in the trees, down to the left. And just put a bit of a scattering out, so. Thank you. 
just putting a bit of scattering all the way along the margin really just to try and stop the fish in the tracks in whichever direction they come and hopefully then they find the hook bait so fingers crossed that should be enough on the left hand rod for certain and then the right hand rod would be uh, probably a catty job so let's get the catapult out see if we can uh, entice a bite Right then, let's put a bit of bait uh, over the right hand rod. Ooh. Blimey. Massive vicious line of that was on the right hand rod. Yeah, I think it's just the liner there. So once again, just going to put sort of 15, maybe 20 baits just in the general area where I'm going to be fishing, especially this morning at least. If nothing happens by lunchtime, I think we'll definitely be moving, but uh, yeah, like I say, a few people turning up. I don't know how easy it's going to be to move, but we'll see. So that's a few baits out there. Hopefully that vicious liner turns into an absolute screamer in a minute. Right then, well the rods have only been out about half an hour and it's 1-0 to the uh, fluoro wafter. So yeah, little yellow PB wafter, little mesh bag of the uh, cray mix. And we're off the mark, happy days. So look, see, rods have only been out about half an hour, so hopefully that's good things to come for the rest of the day. And now it's time to see if the uh, match the hatch can even up the scorecards. So, I'm going to flip this one back out, again on the fluoro, just so we can see which one's doing the do. And uh, yeah, fingers crossed we can have a couple more. So you might be able to tell from a bit of foam on it, it's been beating me up on the mat, so I'm not going to get any photos, just going to slip it straight back, get the rod back out, see if we can get another one. Happy days! Okay then, fish number two then, and once again on the uh, fluoro wafter, another PB doing the job. But uh, yeah, we're going to reel in that right hand rod and stick that down the margin as well, see if we can uh, start getting a bite on both rods. Because at the moment, the fluoro wafters are running away with it. So a couple of hours on, two fish in, happy days, fingers crossed we can get a couple more. So uh, two nil to the fluoro wafters. Let's see what happens next. Right then, well I thought I'd very quickly just talk to you about the setup I'm using today on this session. So, got my main line coming down to a leg clip system, three ounce lead, I never go any smaller, even on small waters, just because I find it sends that hook home and that second fish was absolutely nailed. Um, it's a rig I've been using lots and you've probably seen in the last couple of videos and I have actually done a separate video talking about the sort of components and why I like it so much. Um, so that link will be uh, in the description down below if you want a few more details. But as you can see on there, I've got a S7 uh, dumbbell wafter, so that's the match the hatch side. And then on the other rod I've been fishing so far, a PB wafter, which is one of the yellow ones from DNA. So, so far, still 2-0 to the uh, yellow dumbbells. So the floor rows are definitely in the lead, but uh, let's get this one back out there and see if we can uh, get the match the hatch onto the score sheet. Right then, well, yeah, after that second fish, like I said, I was going to, I've reeled in the right-hand rod and flipped it down this right-hand margin, just down to this, uh, this sort of overhanging tree here. So, here we go, it's probably 15 boilies over top. Fingers crossed we can get the right hand rod on the match the hatch going as well. Well I'm going to keep this quick because the, the battery warning light is starting to flash and this fish has been absolutely smashing me on the bank, I won't lie. Gave me a good little ruckus under the rod tip as well. So yeah, good bit of fun but came to the match the hatch so 2-1 to the fluoros but the match the hatch is on the score sheet and uh, yeah, it's all to play for. So it's late morning now, going to slip this one back, flip the rod back out down the margin I'm glad I moved it off the island and uh, yeah, slotted it down that margin because uh, quite clearly that's where the fish are today. So, 
Whew, I feel like I've been in uh, 10 rounds with Mike Tyson. Let's slip it back and get the rod back out. Right, well there we go then. Fish number four and probably about 45 minutes after that third fish. So yeah, that right hand rod, because this one once again was on match the hatch, is definitely coming into life. Really interesting how the sort of first two bites early on this morning came on the uh, fluoro. Now the second two bites in the sort of latter morning and now um, about midday have come on the uh, match the hatch. But as they all have, beating me up on the bank and uh, yeah, I'm out of breath after fighting with it. So I'm going to slip it back, put the kettle on and have a uh, healthy pot noodle. Right then, well fish number five has graced us, but I won't lie, I'm trying to make some lunch and I'm absolutely starving, so I'm just going to slip it straight back rather than get it out. Although it is a lovely little linear. But happy days. Fish number five. Off it goes. Another one to match the hatch. So it's now in the lead. What a comeback. Right, have to be quick. Because I'm getting lines on the other rod. But yeah, fish number six. This one on the PB wafter, so that makes it three all. Floros three. Match the hatch three. But I thought I'd show you this one because it's an absolutely lovely little fish. Mint colours on it, so I'm hoping colouring that right. But yeah, happy days. Fish number six, slip it back, get the rod back out, hit repeat. <laughs> We go down fish number seven probably the smallest of the day actually but uh ah, they're all welcome aren't they so this one came to the match the hatch the s7 wafter so that makes it four three on the experiment so i'm going to switch over the uh, fluoro color so i have been using yellow and i think i actually had one on an orange so i'm going to switch over the color to uh, a pink this time and um just so we can try a few different colors and test the full fluoro range but yeah four three Fish number seven. Happy days, let's get it back. Got no rods in the water at the moment. Right then, so just as a bit of an update for you then. So as I just mentioned, got currently no rods in the water um, due to a bit of a hectic spell. So so I'm gonna leave the rods in for a minute, go get a bit of transitional stuff, just so you haven't got fish after fish in this vlog. And uh, yeah, I thought we'd just do a bit of an update. So fluoro wise, now caught on a fruit delicious, which is an orange one, a PB, which is a yellow one, and I've now got a two-tone pink version out as well. So we'll see if we can catch on a third color. Um, and then obviously on the match the hatch, just use an S7 wafter for out, it's a little dumbbell, lovely, um, brilliant hook bait. So yeah, currently 4-3 to the match the hatch. It'll be interesting to see as I am a massive Floro fan. So um, I'm a little bit surprised, I won't lie. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how this one pans out. But we've probably got about an hour and a half to two hours of light left. And uh, then I'm going to call it a day, get home and uh, do some family duties. So let's go get some transitional footage and hopefully I'll see you soon with another one. Right, well there we go then. The rod's been out of the water for about an hour. Just need to do a bit of filming, get some transitional stuff. Just so it's not a really boring, nothing but fishing video for you. And uh, yeah, put the rods back out. Not in the water, not even five minutes. And uh, yeah, the match of hatch has once again gone rattling off. So this makes it 5-3, fish number eight. And uh, I think I'm going to call it a day on this one. It's been absolutely hectic. I'm running out of leads, I won't lie. And uh, yeah, it's been a really enjoyable day. So I'm going to slip this one back. Like I say, I think I'm going to call it a day. So thanks a lot for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the, uh, the new installment of the cart experiment. Like I said before, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you hit that like button and the bell icon so you get notified of any more videos. And uh, yeah, make sure you follow us on social media as well. We've got Facebook, The Fishing Bloggers TV, Instagram, The Fishing Bloggers. Yeah, and uh, until next time. 
get out on the bank, be lucky, and I hope you catch some of these.